On the 14th of September 2015, scientists at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory detected gravitational waves directly for the first time, a stunning achievement that led to the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics. Why was this significant? Well, here's an analogy. Let's imagine that human beings evolved without the ability to see light. For thousands of years, we'd fumble in the dark, relying on our other senses until, one day, someone invented a machine that could perceive light for us. In time, we'd see everything from the tips of our noses to the farthest flung galaxies. This analogy captures the magnificence of LIGO. It's about much more than proving a scientific prediction. LIGO enables us to perceive the physical universe and understand reality on a new level. Like photons, gravitational waves travel at the speed of light as they ripple across space-time. Their signals are all around us. By listening for gravitational waves with some of the most sensitive instruments ever built, scientists are recording tremors of distant, violent events. The formation of black holes, supernova explosions, and, potentially, exotic phenomena we haven't discovered yet. So what are gravitational waves? What causes them? And why is LIGO's ability to detect them already transforming our understanding of the universe? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join me today as we learn about gravitational waves, unpack the groundbreaking technology behind LIGO, and anticipate some of the stunning developments that lie around the corner. Gravitational waves are one of the stranger implications of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. As we've covered previously, space-time is a model that combines the three dimensions of space and the fourth dimension of time into a single manifold. All objects with mass create curvature in space-time, and objects with a lot of mass create a lot of curvature, which we experience as gravity. A simple way to visualize this is to think of a pool ball resting on an elastic surface and a bowling ball resting on that same surface. The more massive bowling ball will create more curvature. As objects move across space-time, that curvature changes position with them. One of the amazing consequences is that when objects of a certain mass accelerate, they can send ripples across space-time as gravitational energy. While this requires a special set of conditions, namely a very massive object undergoing acceleration, such a cataclysmic event would send ripples, or gravitational waves, outward at the speed of light. Think of them like ripples on a pond, but instead of water, they travel through the fabric of space-time in all directions. As in the pond analogy, these disturbances become weaker as they radiate outward. To an observer, the distance between objects would appear to expand and shrink as the gravitational wave passes. Mind-boggling to imagine. Yet, although Einstein predicted the existence of gravitational waves, he was pessimistic about our chances of ever detecting them. He thought that these disturbances would be so small as to escape our ability to measure them. And who could blame him? Many of the changes in distance that LIGO seeks to measure are one ten thousandth the length of a proton. Yes, you heard that correctly. 10,000 times smaller than a single proton. And yet, these signals would come encoded with all kinds of information about their origins. When they originated, how far they traveled, and what kind of event produced them. This is where LIGO comes in. It consists of two observatories funded by the United States National Science Foundation and operated by MIT and Caltech. Among its driving forces are renowned physicists Kip Thorne, Rainer Weiss, and Barry Barish, all of whom shared the 2017 Nobel Prize for their decisive contributions to the detection of gravitational waves. LIGO is essentially a large-scale and very sensitive interferometer, an invention that's been around since the 1880s. An interferometer essentially measures what happens when light waves are combined from two or more sources. For example, 
You could use an interferometer to test whether light travels at different speeds through different substances, such as through air or water. Even a subtle difference in speed will produce an interference pattern when the light waves combine, much like what happens when two ripples on a pond intersect. If the peak of one ripple hits the valley of a second ripple, they will subtract from each other, producing a flat surface. However, if the peaks line up exactly, it means that the waves are in phase and add to each other. This is essentially what the interferometer measures with light. By seeing how in or out of phase two light waves are, an observer can infer the relative speed of the waves. And the larger and more powerful the interferometer, the more sensitive it is. Here's how it works. LIGO has two observatories located in Hanford, Washington and Livingston, Louisiana. Why two? Well, you need at least two detection sites to triangulate where the signals are coming from. Each observatory continuously fires a powerful laser at a beam splitter positioned at a 45 degree angle. The laser beam has to operate at around 750 kilowatts, powerful enough to vaporize you completely if you got in its path. The splitter then splits the laser beam perpendicularly. The light in each arm travels down a 4 km vacuum cavity with a mirror at the end of it. The beams then bounce between this mirror and the recycling mirror at the other end nearly 300 times, increasing the distance from 4 to 1200 kilometers. Remember what we said, with interferometers, bigger is better. After completing nearly 300 trips, the laser beams combine at the beam splitter and head to a photodiode, which is a light sensitive semiconductor. If undisturbed, the beams will be in phase, meaning their frequencies will subtract each other and no light will arrive at the photodiode. But if there's a gravitational wave, the distance each beam travels will be slightly different and they'll be out of phase. The photodiode will pick up a signal indicating the presence of a gravitational wave. Now, this is how it works in a perfect world, but in reality, the interferometer is constantly picking up noise. To minimize this, LIGO uses incredibly smooth 40 kilogram mirrors suspended by silica threads. Any particles in the interferometer's arms are also a problem, which is why LIGO pumps the air from its vacuum chambers to one trillionth of atmospheric pressure. But there's another problem. At these minuscule levels, even quantum mechanics are a nuisance because they introduce randomness into photon behavior. LIGO mitigates this with an optical cavity which squeezes the light. This squeezing minimizes the light phase's noise and squeezes it into amplitude noise, which the interferometer doesn't measure. In other words, the quantum randomness will show up more in the height of the waves. Quantum randomness is a fact of life it can't be eliminated, but it can be shifted, much as you might move clutter from your bedroom floor to your closet. The chaos isn't gone, just out of sight for the moment. Plus, the goal isn't to eliminate noise completely, but to get the best signal-to-noise ratio possible. That's a pretty good overview of how LIGO works. So, what has it discovered? As I mentioned earlier, LIGO detected its first signal in 2015. Named GW150914, scientists studied the data and learned that it was caused by the merger of two black holes about 1.6 billion light years away. These black holes, which were 29 and 36 solar masses, became a binary and spiraled around each other until they merged and released a blast in the final 20 milliseconds that was so powerful. Now, Get ready for this number because this is what the scientists actually think. It contained 50 times the combined light power of every star in the observable universe. At the risk of sounding crude, that is nuts. I've read this fact many times over and I still cannot comprehend what it means. Yet, after traveling for 1.6 billion years and finally reaching LIGO, the disturbance was so faint, it moved LIGO's 4-kilometer arm 
one thousandth of the width of a proton. To visualize this, imagine the distance between us and Proxima Centauri and changing it the width of a human hair. That is the level of precision LIGO was able to detect. If that's not one of the most astonishing feats in human history, I don't know what is. And this was just the first gravitational wave LIGO detected. The second detection occurred three months later in December 2015. That signal also came from a black hole merger, which took place 1.4 billion light years away. Over its initial three runs, LIGO recorded more than 80 black hole mergers, and in August 2017, it detected the merger of two neutron stars. Named GW170817, this signal was notable for being the first gravitational wave to be corroborated by electromagnetic observations from 70 observatories across the planet. This was a breakthrough not only in gravitational wave detection, but in multi-messenger astronomy. It turns out, LIGO was just warming up during these three runs. As of May 2023, LIGO has begun its fourth run with better sensitivity than ever. After its latest round of upgrades, which kept LIGO offline for three years, the observatories now have more reflective mirrors, better mirror suspension, and improved light squeezing with lower quantum uncertainty. And this time, LIGO also has the support of Kagra, a new interferometer observatory in Hida, Japan. Kagra is located underground, making it the world's first subterranean gravitational wave observatory and also the first to use cryogenic mirrors. During an engineering run on the 18th of May, LIGO scientists say they already received a signal that was possibly caused by a neutron star being swallowed by a black hole. We'll have to wait a while for confirmation, but if these early results are any indication, LIGO is about to blow the doors off our understanding of gravitational wave generating phenomena. So what other developments lie ahead? India is preparing a collaborative project called LIGO India or Indigo, which will help LIGO triangulate better location data. In 2027 to 2028, LIGO will implement its LIGO Voyager upgrade, which will achieve higher sensitivity with four times heavier mirrors and higher frequency lasers. And in the more distant future, a third generation facility has been proposed called Cosmic Explorer. This facility would feature two new observatories with arms spanning 40 kilometers and 20 kilometers respectively. Remember, with interferometers, bigger is better. But the proposal that really excites me is the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA. This would be the first space-based gravitational wave observatory, which would utilize three spacecraft in a 2.5 million kilometer long configuration. This interferometer would be so big and so precise, scientists hope it would be adept at uncovering exotic and theoretical sources of gravitational waves, such as cosmic strings and other speculative phenomena. In theory, it could help us stare directly into the fabric of reality. With a planned launch date of 2037, we're still over a decade away, but it's never too early to start counting the years. So there you have it, an overview of LIGO and how scientists are using gravitational waves to better understand the universe. They give us evidence of extremely remote and ancient phenomena that cannot be measured by other means, and they can be a secondary way to measure observations made by other instruments like the Webb Telescope or Hubble. In time, this revolutionary field should allow us to understand the nature of our universe, its history, and even its future. I hope you found this episode as fascinating as I have. As I've watched my child grow, it's been wonderful seeing them explore the world around them through interacting with it. I'm sure this fact will shock you, but I love sharing science facts with my family. It's fantastic seeing the growing understanding in my young daughter's eyes as she learns something extraordinary about the world and universe we live in. 
which is why I very much appreciated the crate I received from KiwiCo, the sponsor of today's video. Inside was everything we needed to build a glow-in-the-dark moon, a galaxy tube, and a toss-the-comic game. My daughter loved painting the moon, and I helped her put it all together. KiwiCo crates are packed with a fun range of science projects for kids from zero to my age. You can make planets with them. Wow, how do you make planets? The expert team of educators, engineers, and even rocket scientists spend over a thousand hours designing a new monthly project for your kids to learn from. From rockets to robots and chemistry sets to cooking tools. If you want to join in the monthly fun, click my link below and give it a try. If you use my code ASTRUM, you even get 50% off your first month. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn about some other really unique telescopes, check out this playlist here. A big thanks to my patrons and members for your support too. If you want to support and have your name added to this list, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.